All right. We're supposedly setting up the meeting. There we go. And we're up and running here. I'm both recording it and doing this. And hi, how are you, everybody? Let me just see here. It's Your meeting is being live streamed. Okay, that's good to know. And it's also being uh, recorded. There we go. Okay, hi. See? This is the simple show we do. We don't we don't have any visuals or graphics or whatever or animations to start off the show. It's just us, our coffee, and some good friends who we're going to admit right now, because here they come. Here comes Charlie Wallace, and here comes Mike Chisholm, and here comes Andrew Deutsch and uh, Charlene Solis and Len LaFrisco. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And probably there'll be more people coming here uh, shortly. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here comes Marjorie and here comes Paul Levin. There we go. Okay. This is at least a good start. And we maybe should have a few more joining us. Yes. Hello to everybody. How are Oh, Mandy. Here's Mandy. Got to get Mandy. Okay. Uh, hello, Mandy. She'll be here shortly. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. And uh, there's Miss Darlene. Hey, <laughs> kind of off and running here. Yeah. I have to keep my eye out for all this other stuff, however. How are you all? Good. Good. Yeah. How are you? Um, uh, we, have, we have Charlie. You. <laughs> we have Mike Chisholm. Hi, Mike. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Not in your normal studio, huh? I'm sure not. No, I'm somewhere else entirely right now. Where in are fact... You? Well, let's see if you guys can guess. So I'm in a hotel room. Now, let's just see if I do this. Let's see if you can guess where I am. It's the Motel 6. <laughs> <laughs> Leave on I, the red light. Well, let's, let's see here. The Motel 4. Is that New York, Marjorie? No. Hotel no. California. <laughs> uh, where is that? It does. It, I'd say it was. I'd say because I know his habits that he was in New York, but I don't think it is New Orleans. No, I'm in Paris, France. Everybody, you're what? in Paris. Yeah, I was going really? to make a joke and say Paris, and I went, Nah, I can't be. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why did you go to Paris? Um, my wife who was sleeping here, but that's okay. She knows I'm making this call and all that. And but but our trip was. A long, 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 long time uh, between yesterday and today. So we're both knocked out. Uh, we're here for, my wife has a men's mental wellness app. She is here for a meeting. A and meeting? Well, that's very nice. It, yes. And more about that next week or the week after. If the meeting goes well, I'll uh, I'll tell everybody the, the results of that meeting. But yes, we're here is for that, a very good reason. Is that the first time that you had been in Paris? This is the first time we've been to Paris, yes. Is there any oh, chance you could wind up living in Paris? <laughs> no, we, we would live in New York before we lived in Paris. But that being said, um, the person that we're having the meeting with, uh, if they become an associate, it looks like they're going to become sort of a partner in with it. Uh, so we will be going to Paris uh, on business. Oh, and, well, we, we and can we're meet. very fine with that. It's an awesome city. We can meet you over there. Uh, that sounds good. Yeah, well, because we're in our last moments of uh, uh, this whole thing with money coming. Yeah, well, let's stop it. What do you mean? I mean, I, it's just, we're in the last throes of it, finally. Yeah. So it takes a long time for that stuff to uh, to work oh, itself uh, out, doesn't it? I, 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 the difference in my health between when we first started this journey and now, and Marjorie's. You know, I fell the other day again. By the way, just in oh case. no. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, but I'm afraid to walk. I really am. You know, I'm walking with a cane, not because I need the cane to walk, but I want it for security. You know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, hey there. Uh, there's uh, there's our good friend uh, Andrew Deutsch. Well, he's he's a friend here. Uh, <laughs> let's all say hello to Edward Berger. That's hey, right. <laughs> Len, hi there. How you doing? 
I'm well, sir. Thank you. How are you? Len LaFrisco. Paul Eleven, how are you how's your health doing now? You you went through I'm, an operation and everything. I did, but I'm I'm doing I'm doing much better. And anybody says Paris, and it just brings up a whole load of, of amazing memories. I was only there once, but what a place. What a wonderful place. Yeah. Well, I was I've been there quite a few times, actually, in my life. Try the, we try were the there together. Yeah, we're what? Yeah, I I never liked the French that much though. They're they're a little hard to take, you know. Um, first the, I went all... there. I went to lunch in the Eiffel. Uh, was it the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, the second floor of the Eiffel Tower, or the first floor. There's a restaurant there, and um, it was like I I must I was wearing a soccer shirt, and I don't think they liked my soccer shirt or something. But they were giving me a bad time about serving me. I'm saying, can I get a waiter, a waiter over here in a moment, please, sir? You know, and it was just terrible. I couldn't have gotten out of out of Paris fast enough. Right. Other times I've gone there, it's been a much more positive. We had a good time there. Experience. Yeah, we had a nice time. That's a that that's part of Paris is being treated like crap. Like being treated like crap. Yeah. My my, my friends and colleagues who I did work with there said, "Don't don't be offended. It's not that we treat you any different than we treat each other." <laughs> okay. Yeah. And but, uh, course, I hear the fries are good. They yeah. got those good French fries. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy's here. Hello, Mandy. Hi. How you doing, darling? Good. I'm good. Yeah. My niece was actually in France. I don't know. I don't think she's still in France, but she was in Paris or Paris in France a few days ago. And she texted my sister that she didn't really like it. She thought it was very dirty. Because she's yeah, she's a Gen Z, you know, there she's only 23. So I don't know what she was expecting. I, never, I don't know that I ever found Paris dirty. Do you find it that way uh, so far? Um, I've never found Paris dirty. Yeah. No, we find it very clean. We find it very, very clean. And I, we've only been, um, we got here this afternoon. We went up to the uh, the artist district with that, uh, I forget what it's called, but the, 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 up at the very top of the hill. Um, you mean Sacre where that, uh, Sacre Coeur, the church? Sacre Coeur. Yeah, that's right. You were in Montmartre. Um, Montmartre. Yep. Yeah. We went up there and hung out there for a while. And then we walked to the Eiffel Tower from there. Um, and so everything that we saw today was it was really clear. Here, I'll tell you our first impression. Our first impression of Paris was that Paris and New York are sisters. Paris is the older sister, and New York is the younger, rebellious sister. That's uh, that's that that was our first impression of Paris, comparing it to New York, which we love so much. Because you got the contrast between each other. Paris has no advertising whatsoever. New York, there's advertising everywhere, but. Some of the I, I, some... I'm more, you know, I think you have a better opinion of New York than I do. I compare it to a painful rectal itch. <laughs> <laughs> Very oh, painful. Like that. <laughs> well, siblings can cause that kind of pain as well. And let me say hello to Charlene as well. I don't want to leave her out of this. Uh, no, I have I have news. What? I found, yesterday, I found out yesterday I'm gonna be a grandma again. Whoa. So how many times is this your your grandma? It'd be three times. Wow. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so I'm so excited. It was such a surprise. My that's my nice. daughter, um, she had an Easter egg and she had the little two-year-old that she had um opened up the Easter egg and she pulled out the um the ultrasound and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Everybody else is going, what is that? What is that? No, there was a time when you didn't know till the kid was born what sex. It was. <laughs> and now they're no, 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 no. My two-year-old dot, my two-year-old granddaughter opened up the thing. We don't know what it's going to be yet. Oh, okay. we don't know if it's going to be a boy or a girl yet. Going to be a baby. It's going to be a baby. Yeah, I mean, there, I often thought that that was one of the nice things about having a child is you didn't know what it was going to be until mm -hmm. they hatched. You know? Yep. And, that's uh, how mine were. Yeah, and uh, but now well, you know what it's going to be. But that's good mm -hmm. too because at least you know when you buy clothes in advance yeah. and things for the kid and so on, you know what it's going to. You know. Well, we're we're kind of hoping for a boy because we have two granddaughters, but it doesn't matter. I'm I just as long as the baby's healthy, my well, daughter's. If, fine if, if it's another granddaughter, you can just drown her. 
you know. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. You have that often. <laughs> You're a grandmother. You're not a mother. Okay. <laughs> and if, let's see here. Did I say hello to everybody? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Listen, Marjorie and I have an announcement to make. Uh, you make the announcement. I can't believe you're even bringing this up. Well, I'm. Is there an ultrasound involved? No. <laughs> <laughs> they're saying they name us after religion. Oh, we've decided to get divorced. Okay. <laughs> Should we tell them why, Marjorie? It's April no, 1st, this is your thing. That's right. Uh, Somebody okay. got it. Uh, yeah. It took me a second, though. You had yeah, me going. Right. Yeah. So I so had you going. Right you had me going, Mandy. Didn't pull me yeah. Oh, okay. I thought another great horse. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> so that thing I read online that you're getting a late night talk show uh, against Jimmy Kimmel, Alex, is uh, is false. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what. You, we, it was online that you you're going to be competing with Jimmy Kimmel at the same same time with your new talk show. Oh yeah, is he, sure. is he Chism, getting a Chism divorce too? <laughs> He's got you confused with Jay Leno. Yeah, those. Are Someone posted that in the uh, Letterman podcast Facebook group, and I had just gotten off the plane, and like I say, it was a long long trip. We flew over the Arctic Circle, flew all night. And so I just got to the hotel room and I looked in the Letterman podcast Facebook group and I'd forgotten it was April 1st because we left on the 31st. And somebody had a convincing, like at first glance, convincing article, Jay Leno signs billion dollar deal with CBS to go uh, have a talk show against Jimmy Kimmel. And it got a few people. It was a oh, good one. Yeah, yeah. Well, anything's better than Colbert. Yeah, you know, so. <laughs> that uh, Colbert. Such a disappointment to see that that theater being used for Colbert, and then he puts his whole name down the side of it. Of the theater. Yeah, the theater. Yeah. I, don't know, I think Jimmy Fallon's the worst one. Well, Will Fallon's the worst one. Yeah. yeah. He is. Uh, By the way, Alex, I finally have a new movie to add to my list. It's now the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Wait, wait a minute. Is it is it current? Yes. It's I saw it on the app. It's I, where did you see it? What, what I, I want to say it was Max, but it might have been Hulu. The worst movie. Huh. It's the worst, dumbest, ridiculous thing I've ever seen. I can't believe I watched just to see where the hell the thing was going. Are you going to tell us, or do we have well, to wait a minute? I'm trying, to, and watch I'm it trying to and then yeah. suffer. <laughs> it has the kid that was in Harry Potter in it. Yeah, I think of Daniel whatever Radcliffe. Radcliffe. He plays he plays a corpse, <laughs> who a guy rides <laughs> in the ocean like a jet <laughs> ski powered by his farts. Come oh, on, wait a minute. Wait this a is minute. not an April Fool's joke. This is not an April Fool's. This joke. is April Fool's. No, no I. She doesn't know what I'm talking everyone. about. It is. What? You know what I'm. Th what is it? What's a movie? It's called the Human Swiss Army Knife. Come on. It is the worst movie ever made. April Fool's. No, no, not April Fool's. <laughs> not, he, he, he already did. Not April Fool's. April Fool's. It's not. It, yeah, that's a real movie. The guy's like lost in the on the Pacific Ocean on a beach What's it somewhere. The human and Swiss a, Army knife. Yeah, human Swiss Army knife. It's online here. I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not making this up. It's there have been lots of bad movies in my life. I've never seen anything more stupid, disgusting, <laughs> ridiculous. It it passed the human centipede as being just one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> wow. Well, here it is. It's on YouTube, it's on Hulu, and it's on I Amazon guess. Prime, which means it's got to be terrible if it's on all of those at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wanted an exclusive. It's the, first, it's the first time I've ever been an advocate of censorship. <laughs> <laughs> it's that bad a movie. You, Let me see here. If I go to Rotten Tomatoes. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Well, this is Swiss Army Man. Yeah, Swiss Army Man. Sorry. Sure. Is that the name? Yeah, that's it. I had it wrong. Swiss Army Man. 
It's on Netflix. It's from 2016. Huh. For some reason, the algorithm thought that I needed to see it. It kept popping up again and again. And I went, <laughs> Well, yeah, when I, when I first got Tebo, I thought it was I was that a... terrible. How far did you get into it? <clears throat> oh no, I you watched the whole thing. It was on while I was working. I was doing other things, so I left it on. Yeah, really, really. Do you believe that? Well, <laughs> if it's that bad, you <laughs> want to watch the whole thing. I was hanging sure. cabinets while it was on. Because the worst thing might be they come out with a sequel and you don't know what happened in the original. <laughs> well, they, they did leave lots of questions unanswered, so. Did they really? Yeah, like why the hell did they make this piece of crap? Like, <laughs> like, it, it, where, it, it, where was where was the bottle opener? The bottle opener. Was well, says Swiss Army? No, it's because the corpse has all sorts of uh, abilities to guide the story. And Daniel Radcliffe plays the corpse. Yes. And he, there's he something gets, floating on him in the ocean. I mean, he's on the beach. Sure. He's on the ocean. He's being dragged through the woods. He's being eaten by a raccoon. He's a source of water. Wow. What what did Rotten Tomatoes give it? It says 72. 72. <laughs> I can't believe it. I don't like tomatoes either. Fuck <laughs> Tub Time Machine 2 got 14%. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. What what's it what's it called uh, again? It's Swiss, Swiss uh, Army Man. Swiss Army Man. Okay. Sure. We'll watch yeah. that tonight, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> we just watched a series on Showtime, the first episode called uh, "A Gentleman in Moscow." That was a book. Yeah, and it's very good. So was the book. Yeah. I saw it advertised. I've been wanting to watch it. Yeah, it We're really too busy with the army. Do we just? I just saw it and I said, "Yeah, hey, let's check it out." You know, and uh, we watched a whole episode and we really liked it. So yeah, very good. <laughs> the other one that's not very good is this. Uh, the the I can't get the name of it now. It's on HBO. Um, the rain or the oh the rain, yeah, that thing with uh, with. Uh, the woman okay. from Titanic. Uh, what's her name? The one that was in Titanic. It, yeah, it's awful. I we Kate Winslet. Yeah, yeah. Kate Winslet. we did what two episodes and we just couldn't get any further. Wow, yeah. that's disappointing. Yeah, yeah, it was disappointing. Yeah, I, I've loved. I wanted to like it. Done. She's better I mean, when she's letting DiCaprio drown. What? <laughs> she's better when she drowns DiCaprio. Oh. <laughs> anyway, next week is the last week ever of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. Mm. And I went back and I looked at old Curb Your Enthusiasms and decided, yeah, yeah it's about time. You know, it just, yeah, it's just, it's funny, out. but it's losing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have figured out and I'm, I'm predicting how it's going to end. Huh? I predict it is going to be have an ending almost identical to Seinfeld. Yep, I agree. Yeah. He's going to be, they're going to wind up finding him guilty in Georgia and he's going to go to jail. And he's going to go to jail and end up in a cell with the people from Seinfeld. That's why. <laughs> that, would be the reunion. that would be funny. But I well, don't he has a trial that. coming up. We know that. And Bob Newhart, maybe too. <laughs> <laughs> in bed with, with Suzanne Plachette. Yeah, that, that that was the best ending of a of a show. That ever. really was. I, really... I love that one. Oh, the one where where um, he wakes uh, up. He, he wakes, wakes up. up. And, um, yeah, he's ample yeah, chef. All the his wife in a former series was in bed. Yeah. With him. And, that was uh, really good. Because I had the weirdest dream. Yeah. <laughs> so that. And the worst ending of any series? What was the worst ending of any series? Ooh. Lost. Lost. I liked Lost. I, you know what? A lot of people didn't enjoy it. I, I really liked it. I, I liked, was it. Swept I liked up the show it. until I realized they lied about it in the first season, and it was going to end exactly like I thought it would in the first season, and they said it would. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I don't think it was Lost. I think it was Seinfeld. I don't yeah. think there was anybody who wasn't disappointed by that finale. The Sopranos ending was pretty, pretty, pretty bad. What? 
the Sopranos last episode. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like all the callbacks in Seinfeld, all the characters coming back. Yeah, I, I think I like that too. I think that what they were, what's his name, uh, Larry David was writing there as a finale was he didn't care what people thought. He wanted to give everybody a final bow. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody that meant anything to that series was yep. in that episode. Yep. Yep. Uh, have you seen anything lately, um, um, uh, Edward Berger? See, I thought I'd ask him a question. Here. <laughs> have you seen anything you like? On TV? Not really. On TV. <laughs> or, or movies. Or movies. By the way, has any does anybody here go to movies anymore? Theater? Someone, sometimes with my niece. Oh, with your niece, you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you do it, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah just, with my granddaughter, especially, but then Ghostbusters, of course. And like when Deadpool comes out, I'll be there first night when Deadpool comes out. So certain certain ones I I make sure I go see in the theater. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, we, uh, our times going to theaters lately have been nothing but a very negative uh, experience. It's like nobody, it, they know that they lost the audiences and they're doing nothing to get them back. No. You know, I walked into a theater that we went to a lot of times and figured, hey, you go back after COVID, they probably took that time to like. To fix it up. Place up and. Mm -hmm whatever no the t seats were torn and there were crying babies and the whole thing and i'm going come on you know, your it, cell phones so we have no reason to go back to movie theaters absolutely none you know i mean we the last time we went was for oppenheimer that's right that's right and actually i didn't like the film as much in uh, IMAX, imax as i did when i watched it at home yeah it that's was a much because what happens with uh, with IMAX is it's so overbearing in its size and everything that you have a hard time paying attention to the movie. Mm. You know, it's just kind of like all over your face. So I watched it here at home, and the film came alive. It was really, you know, you saw why it was a good film. So and Marjorie, you know, Marjorie doesn't charge you as much for popcorn either. No, she, <laughs> she can't afford it with the divorce. But then again, right. she, doesn't, she doesn't make popcorn. Thank you, Len. We we have gotten addicted to something. She wouldn't bring out popcorn anymore. What would you bring out, Marjorie? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about <laughs> chocolate covered almonds. Ooh, well, you no. said it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are a harsh mistress. Yeah, the ones oh, from, uh, the Costco. big Costco packs. Costco. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, fantastic. If we buy them two jars at a time, so we don't run out, <laughs> you know. And every night she comes in and she here it is, boom! She puts it down. We open it up, eat about ten of them each, and put them away. So we're running out, by the way, Marjorie. I know we have to order two the next time, just so we have it. Yeah, that's the best little like snack at night, just to have yes. some little thing. We were know? just saying, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We were best. doing, we were doing the Stu Leonard's uh, uh, potato chips. No, yes, Stu they Leonard's potato right chips. There. Do we still have some in the house though? I have to order when I put my next order in. You didn't replenish. I see. Okay, yeah, but their potato chips are great. They make them right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows who Stu Leonard's is because it's not a, a it's an Eastern thing. Uh, it's basically in New York, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. On Jerry Seinfeld's uh, Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee, the episode with David Letterman, he uh, borrows David Letterman's car that was made by Paul Newman, and the first scene in it, he takes it to Stu Leonard's. Yeah. Fills it up with stuff, and then he yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very, by the uh, way, by the way, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm redeemed Seinfeld's last episode. The the Curb Your Enthusiasm Seinfeld reunion was incredible. It was so good. Yeah, it was very good. You know, but it, they didn't do a reunion technically. That was that wasn't a reunion. That was a story about doing a reunion. Yeah, but they never very had clever. Do, they never had to do a full episode. They did a little bit here and a little bit there of it. You know, you got an idea of what it was about. Yep. But uh, it still got the same cast together. 
Yep. Yeah. Did you see the Larry David interview on CNN talking about the past uh, president whose name I won't speak? No. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta see he, that. he just laid him out. He's a baby. He's a. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> what I was going to say about. About uh, the about Seinfeld reunion thing that they did on on Curb, and you know how many years ago that was? I went back to look at it, like ten it was, years ago, wasn't it? it was season seven. It was about ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was spectacular. It's genius yeah. how they did that. Yeah, it's very good, very good. But you know, um, I think it's time for Larry to say goodbye. You know. Well, the, right. the episode that we saw from yesterday was fantastic. Yesterday was really good with Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. That good to not like that. Yeah. Bruce who? Yeah, Bruce. <laughs> He's Alex another and generation. I have to admit, I have never been a big fan of Bruce Springsteen. Me either. Oh. Hey? What did I show you today? How about you, Charlie? <laughs> Charlie. You, Charlie agrees with me. No. no, I don't. No, he doesn't. I love Bruce Springsteen. Charlie was flabbergasted. What do you think of that duet with that. Uh, Taylor Swift? <laughs> hey, but you love Taylor Swift too. <laughs> so she's very talented. Yes, she's she very, is very talented. talented. Hey, Charlie, I'm looking at your at your T-shirt there. Yep. And I am I'm reminded that uh, you know, like it, uh, in, in Akron, Ohio, that's going to come right. That that's like. Uh, like round zero, which is amazing. Oh, yeah, we're next. What is it? Next Tuesday, next week, Monday, next Monday, yeah. Monday, and it's supposed to happen like uh, around three thirty here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the one eclipse. o'clock here, but the weather forecast is for it to be rainy and cloudy in Austin. Oh no! Oh, oh, no. I've been we practicing putting my thumb over the sun every day. Yes. Uh, in, in California, it's maybe happening this night. time. Maybe this it. time, Trump will go blind, huh? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, if it if it clears up, and then I won't be here Monday because I'll be out looking at the but. So. Wait a minute. This time. Well, wait a minute. Recapping. You need to bring your text. computer out. There. Trying to think of what time it is where yeah, you. next man. Monday is the eighth. I thought it was happening on the night. It's ninth. happening about two fifteen in the afternoon. Yeah. That's where you are. Till about four, but. The height of it is somewhere else. Last time I was with an eclipse, I was in the Mediterranean, and I was on vacation, and it was at night, and it was a lunar eclipse, yeah. and the the whole the whole moon got blotted out. I have a video of it, as a matter of fact, you know. Um, but it, that, that was the last time I was able to do that. Also, tomorrow is a primary here in New York. Oh. And Marjorie and I have decided, why vote? You know, the only person yeah. on the ballot is Biden. What, I'm going to go give my choice? You know. Uh, you I don't, don't have mail-in ballots there? Huh? You don't have mail-in ballots there? I imagine we do if we ask for it. Uh, California, you just get them now. It's automatic. What, they send them to you automatically? Yeah. And I and I wonder how, how much work do you have to go through to get them back? Do you have to do something? Just, no, no. It comes with a prepaid self-addressed stamped envelope and stuff. It in. Yeah. So Here you got to request them, and then you got to have uh, you got to put documentation of who you are, and you got to pay <laughs> to mail it back. Yeah, no, it's all free here. So you have to be a registered Democrat to do this, though, right? No, the primary <laughs> depends on the state. Democrat. Okay, like anybody, anybody could vote for Biden. There are states with open tomorrow? primaries, which means anyone could vote as either party that day. Yeah, okay. it's not, it's not, it's not. primary in California, is it? No, California, you get Republican or Democrat or Independent or whatever you're registered as. I mean, if it were an open primary, I'd be going <laughs> there tomorrow and uh, Tuesday, well, tomorrow, and and voting and and voting against Trump on the Republican ticket. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, I have an answer to why I vote. And I, the, uh, the reason for me is it makes me feel good. I agree. You what know, about, like, a, that's, that's, that's part of being a citizen is you go vote. Yeah, but that's if you like it that much, you should vote two or three times. With, this is a primary. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. Alex, it's Principal just across the street at the Senior Citizen yeah. Building. Oh, I don't want to go out oh, and hang out with old people. Well, you, oh, you can pick one. 
pick yourself up some flan at the same time. It's yeah, going to well, be no, great. No, what happens is you go in there, you vote, and then as I leave, somebody there says, would you like a room? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, no, one of the reasons, I mean, here in New York, there's just no reason to do it. I know who's going to win. You know, in fact, in the general election, same thing, but I do the general election just so that I add a number. Okay. Alex, isn't our guy in the building running? See, it's for positions I, I like that. We have a guy in this building who's always running for something and never winning. I don't think he ever <laughs> wins. Every year he's out giving I'm, I'm declaring my candidacy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got ten. You got ten votes anyway. <laughs> I have never failed to vote. I have voted in every election that I've been eligible for since me I turned. Too. Well, okay, but let me Same. make an argument Same. here. Okay, I've I've said this before. I don't consider primaries legitimate, and here's why I don't consider them legitimate. They're not mandated by the Constitution. They were invented as a method of. Uh, people, the parties being able to pick their, you know, their candidate. Well, and in many times it didn't in the old days. I remember when I was a kid, there weren't primaries. They were, they started in, uh, they started in 1912, but they didn't come into f larger force till what, 1932. And still, when I lived in California, I don't remember there were primaries when I was growing up. You know, but they have propositions. You had conventions, ballot. and then you sat there and you watched the conventions, and everybody fought with each other for who was going to be the nominee, and you know that was it. Um, so I I don't consider the primaries le a legitimate part of the election process. In fact, I think it's actually ruined the election process because really we should only have about three months where they're campaigning. The time between the last convention and the time between the uh, the voting. Until then, there should be none of this stuff, none of these primaries and who's going to win this and who's going to win that. Let them go to their conventions, figure out who their standard bearer is going to be, and then we'll decide between the two of them. I think Bernie Sanders would agree with you. Does he agree with that philosophy? Well, the primaries and the superdelegates and all that sort of stuff are what caused him to not get the nomination twice yeah yeah so i mean it, it i just consider them Ill illegitimate in that they were never mandated by the uh by the uh, uh, uh constitution the the elections are you know but not the uh not the primaries well, so. they, they put they put um uh you know propositions and things on those primary ballots now so there's a reason yeah. to vote for us anyway you and also, know. there's local people that run, yeah, you know, like our guy in the council and stuff. Well, the primaries, for the most part, I don't think do much of anything in that way. I think it's the final uh, election in November where you get the real propositions and all of that. You know, um, we had a, we had a big proposition on this year's um, primary ballot. So, two point six billion dollars for homeless, something or other. I don't know. And it passed. Okay, by if we had that here, I would go do it. Mm. But you know, I I've never seen propositions here in New York really compelled me to go in and vote. Yeah, did you Did you look up what your ballot looks like? Uh, we didn't get. Do we get ballots, Marjorie? You can look it up online. Online, uh, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll voting. I'll, Charlie, if there are some propositions that I absolutely want to vote for. Fine, but if it's like you know, how about the guy in our building? I don't even know his name. Whatever his name is. <laughs> I mean, how's that? I've known this guy ever since we moved in here, and I don't know his name. So if I'm and he's gonna... always running, huh? He's always <laughs> running for something. Charlie has his hand raised. Yes, Charlie. I I would disagree with you about primaries because if you wait and let the politicians pick, they'll just pick whoever the hell they want. It wouldn't matter what the people want. At it's least the people have a voice in the primaries. Bernie would have gotten nowhere. He wouldn't have gotten a single vote. If he, he still didn't up. get anywhere. He, <laughs> he still didn't get anywhere. He should have. He should have won. He should have won he both came of them. Like sixty points behind to just barely lose to Hillary. Actually, uh, President Obama could say the same thing. 
Yeah. What? What did Obama Prim- say? Primaries, primaries are what uh, caused him to, uh, to, his popularity to explode yeah. the way it did. And the primaries are what, because who was it? It was somebody else that was, oh, it was Hillary. Hillary was the one that was going to, you know, yeah, everyone it, thought it was going to be her, but if it was yeah, the primary. He, he, yeah, he, he outdistanced her. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. maybe maybe it convinces people that uh, about you know who, who looks like a winner, so that the, the, the big donors can can get in there. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, you know, um, I mean, like for instance, the insanity that's going on in the Republican Party. I mean, we already know who the nominees are going to be, you know, yeah. and and we're not that close to the conventions yet. But already, you know, it's it's a, it's a fait accompli that these two guys are going up against each other, which seems like a really bad TV rerun. Yeah. Spoiler will be the RFK thing, that weirdo that he just picked that's against IVF. Oh, my God. For his running mate. She looks like she's about 14. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. I, I, she's barely eligible. I think she's only like 36. Wow. I think we need we need 14-year-old politicians. We should get the get them while they still know everything. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Just to ask them, they'll tell you. There are only a couple <laughs> of times I've been truly in my whole life satisfied with who got nominated for the party and who won. I mean, I uh, I think one of them was in retrospect Lyndon Johnson was a terrific president. Really? I agree. Y- yeah. You don't agree, okay. Lynn? I, I, I well, I, it's a little bit. You know, I was like eight, seven, or eight years old, but um, I heard he was an absolute nutcase. He would hold meetings in his bathroom. Oh yeah, no, no, he was very he proud wasn't of a his... nutcase. He was a, yeah. uh, shall we say, an extreme human being. He had <laughs> he odd, used... odd and unusual quirks. He was very he proud. Would, he would no. He would invite senators in to talk to him while he was on the toilet. But he always got to really? play. Yeah. That I was thought the- cool how he was a teacher. And he, he was apparently very proud of his appendage. Yeah. Every, everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, uh, uh, Mandy? I was just going to say, I just thought it was kind of neat how he was a school teacher. Was he a school teacher? Yeah. Really? 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 I didn't even remember that one. There's a great recording of him getting a pair of pants tailored. <laughs> that, that's hilarious. <laughs> telling tell him, tell him the tailor about his uh, his endowments mm. and how how he should tailor around them. Oh, really? I didn't know oh. that about Johnson. Oh, it's, oh. it's all about his Johnson. <laughs> Why do you think they call it a Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I don't care he held meetings. He had great policies. The recording's funny as hell. <laughs> he was a tall guy, and I imagine he said to the tailor, "Am I the biggest Johnson you've ever seen?" No, he was looking for the right amount, right amount of room for his boys. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, but no, I, I considered him a good president. I mean, what he did for civil rights was absolutely. You know, yeah. this out of a out of a, uh, a southern uh, politician uh, whose yeah. every every instinct was to not do that. That's right. And, and yet he got right uh, social legislation more so more social legislation passed than any single president in history huh. he did but he got stuck with vietnam and and uh if you, you, remember, you remember what happened then it was like uh there were there were, there were riots in the streets and hey 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 lbj how many kids did you kill today and all of that well, that was well, the that's reason why he said he wasn't going to run that, that was the reason he decided not that's to right. run i remember that yes. speech he gave yeah i looked yes. over the person w- who was in the room with me and said i'll bet at some point he's going to say he's not running again yep. and sure enough that's exactly what he did and he did basically he... said that he felt that once he had lost those people uh he was he didn't have a good chance of winning you know. No, he said once he lost Walter Cronkite. Well, That's Walter right. Cronkite, That's said, right. Oh, I lost Walter yeah. Cronkite. Yeah, yeah. That's right. But, uh, and then I, you know, I, I kind of like Clinton as a president. I think he was. Uh, he, he balanced the budget. 
Well, I mean, he, how he many was, presidents was, yeah. have ever done that? Yeah, you know, he was pretty much of a centrist, though. So I wasn't that crazy about him because I was the radical leftist who didn't want anybody to be anywhere in the middle. You know, you got to be to the left or not at all. And then I think the president I became happiest with after a while was Obama. Uh, not in his first term. His first term, he was mediocre at best. He was learning the job. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he was also second... taking over the biggest economic crisis in history. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he did a like... fine job of that. But basically, he was still learning the job. He had never, you know, he'd only been a senator for two years or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he jumped into the fray. Uh, one of the few times, by the way, that a senator had become president of the United States. Usually they were governors, you know. Uh, Lots of tried, like Bob Dole tried. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, they, um, don't make, they don't make good. Mitt Romney and they John make, Kerry. Yeah, but it, 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 congressmen and senators don't make good, um, uh, what do you call it? Don't make good presidents. presidents. Governors they never make, ran it make good presidents because they have the learning. Uh, you know, they have the skill set. Slumlords don't make good presidents either. What? Slumlords don't make good presidents either. Slumlords? Really? No. Yeah, yeah. Really. Mm. No, but they make great slumlords. And that <laughs> they make good Bible salesmen. <laughs> slumlords usually. Who would them. ever have believed what we are looking at on the daily news? A Bible that has in it the, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And the Constitution. Only fifty nine ninety nine, folks. Hold on, it has the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, as if they're not. In the... Yeah, as if they're two different things. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, it, what president do you know ever sold sneakers? Will you uh, give me an answer to that? Or yeah. they? Lincoln sold sneakers, didn't it? Or they? <laughs> <laughs> Obama <laughs> could have. <laughs> he was cool. He was cool enough. He could have sold sneakers. Yeah. My, oh, well, hi, Alex. I have another doctor's appointment. This is from Francine Witt. Uh, doctor's mm. appointment. So, unfortunately, I will miss you today. See you next week. Okay. I love it how people write me when they can't make it. That, that, uh, <laughs> we feel bad. We like to be here. This is a important yeah. part of our lives. It, it is. It's a, the best part of my life. You know, <laughs> when we go to Europe, I have to think, uh, or on vacation, I have to think of a way. Uh, I'm going to buy a portable and whatever that I can do the show from on board a ship or something like that. Yeah, you should be able to. Get, oh yeah, I just get someone to zoom on. You have an iPad, don't you? It, what? You have an iPad, right? Yeah, but that doesn't. I mean, I could do it from the iPad. Yeah, but I'd so, rather do it from a computer where I have control. Let's buy something yeah. new. There Alex, give someone in the group the uh, the authorization to start the meeting up, and then you join it as a guest. You can join from anywhere. Find, find someone in the group That's that you trust to set up the meeting. Well, I, but I can I can set up. Uh, I think um, I can set up this system, Zoom. No, Alex, you just want to get a new computer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm getting a computer that I can do the show from. It will also allow me to do the the nighttime show too. Yeah, it has to be done. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I don't know if I'm going to do the nighttime show. I'll tell you why. I was thinking about it today. Yeah. That goes on at 1030 at night. What time is that in France? Huh? Seven oh, hours. Boy, that would be in the middle of the night. Yeah, it'd be, yeah, well, it'd be towards hours, the end of the night, actually. Yeah. Be be about 430. Yeah. 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 I'm not staying up that late to do the show. <laughs> you shouldn't. You should wake up that early. Yeah. <laughs> So what I'm thinking of doing is doing this show and not the other one, you know. Works for us. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. because this one I could do and I would have to. It's, 10, it. it's 10 p.m. right now. Or 10 it's 10 p.m. when the show started. Yeah. 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 So that'd be fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, and then you have to you have to find some place with Wi-Fi because, you know, you don't want to have to pay for the european prices that at&t might charge you did you don't they have like roam like home like like for me 
I yeah. pay twelve dollars a day, and I get my exact plan that I have at home. I download. I can do everything. I, I have everything. Yeah, really? don't, don't they do that free. for? They're telling me mine's free. T-Mobile should uh, should just work over there. Anywhere in the world. So, there you go. No, but I don't saying. think AT and T. I think wants to get paid. But I saw here. Here I'm thinking of getting rid of AT and T, and I'll tell you why. Um, they just got um, hacked. Oh yes, they did. And oh, as something like almost how many millions of accounts have oh, been wow, no. And oh no, yeah. yeah. What? What? Who went? Oh no, me banking info. Yeah. Like I just think about people's credit banking info all oh, there's all sorts of stuff tied in with yourself well you account. gotta you gotta remember what does at&t have information on you they really don't have your passwords to your bank accounts and things like that however they have all your text messages though hmm? they have all your text messages though yeah so i mean I, I, are you that paranoid about your text messages <laughs> Well, I mean, mine are to that wait a maybe not me, but you know, old I've been coming on to, but you know, outside of that, <laughs> wait a minute, Mike, where were you on January 6th? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I just, um, uh, all of a sudden, here's a company, right? You got a company, it's a phone company, it's 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 an internet company, it's uh, it's an online um, um, service, all right. And they can't keep people from stealing your information. I mean, yeah. how dumb is that? Yeah. What happened? Did somebody answer a letter from a Syrian prince who wants to get money or something? And all of a sudden, we're all compromised. I mean, can't they do something about it? Can't they make themselves secure enough? Whoopsie. T 10 million of our people got compromised. Come on, you're AT and T. You're supposed to be better than that. Nobody ever said that T-Mobile's been compromised. Yeah, you know? and by yeah, the way, you think a company like that should be the leader? They should be the industry leader in something like that. I think the industry in security and encryption and all that crap. Wrong, but I think the industry leader is T-Mobile. No, they don't. Who? who Ver has Verizon. The Verizon has the most. Oh, oh, Verizon has the most. Okay, I'll buy that. You know. No. I mean, I'm Verizon for my home service, you know, the internet and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, for some reason, I have AT and T. I I don't know why, you know. But I do get free. Uh, what do I get? I get what do you call for free? Um, Prime. No. HBO Max or whatever. H yeah, Max. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which we get uh, we get Hulu and Netflix through. Through T-Mobile. I don't know. When it comes to these hacking, what would you say, Mike? Were you saying I, I was. Oh, I was just saying when it came to these hack things, the one that uh, showed me that in in many respects, technology and the hackers. I mean, it's out of control. Is was when the MGM, when the Vegas, those Vegas uh, Caesars and MGM got hacked. Like that is, that is crazy that they could hack into uh something that um yeah that big because that those guys there they don't mess around with that stuff and when and they the fact that they could be MGM? held for ransom what did they hack at caesars it was a ransomware deal they yeah. uh they 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 got everybody they got their driver's licenses they got all of, all of the stuff and uh they held people them up for were ransom. using their gambling apps uh well, or had visited in Las Vegas, knows yeah. and became like stuff. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, I mean, they're big, but I mean, it happened about eight nine months ago, I think. But you know, AT and T is a communications company. Yeah, they should have, you know, uh, uh, things to prevent that kind of thing from happening. But you they, would think. I mean, are. Who's who's doing most of this hacking? It's either the Chinese or the Russians, right? I'd say the Russians. Aren't we smarter than the Russians? Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. I know someone who's not as smart as the Russians. I think I, I think the ones we have to worry about for this is the Chinese because they're the best hackers in the world, I think. 
They're some yeah. of the best technology people and so on. There isn't a technology they haven't stolen from us. Come on. I was afraid I got hacked. It was rice on my keyboard. <laughs> was what? Rice. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um so um so marjorie and i are getting divorced and uh, we we wouldn't get divorced would we honey do you ever think that about is, do you ever, is, do you ever think about point. do you think about dumping me at all do you ever get that no no uh, i love you yeah i've never had that either with you you know i've never gone well i gotta get out of this you know <laughs> Uh, but um, uh, Marjorie hasn't been that well lately. She's been dizzy. And uh, I have vertigo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you putting in our coffee? Yeah. <laughs> I I have uh, six weeks. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I have vertigo. I've had vertigo for a year or two. And uh, I have all the other Hitchcock movies. What? I have all the other Hitchcock movies. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. So um anyway, well uh, Easter was yesterday. Anybody doing yeah. for Easter? Tiles here. Come on. <laughs> the day before we left, we uh we we set up an Easter egg hunt for our granddaughter and it was sublime. Like I mean, it's tell it's like she's five old, so perfectly in the crosshairs for an outdoor Easter egg hunt. Like this beautiful little five year old girl doing that, it just makes you gives you faith in humanity and all that beautiful stuff. It was great. But answer me this, because I'm Jewish and we don't understand a lot of what you Gentiles do. <laughs> um, what it, 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 uh, obviously Easter is all about the death of your Lord. And, and the resurrection. And the resurrection. And the resurrection, which happened on Easter Day, supposedly. Okay. The third day, yeah. Okay. So what does resurrection have to do with a bunny rabbit and Easter eggs? <laughs> same things, same things with the red uh the red suited Coca-Cola bearded man has to do with the 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 birth of set the same guy. I don't know. No, it's and a little different. Easter day of all your holidays, all the Christian it's a little holidays, different. Easter is Easter is the most reverent. Am I right about that? It's the yes. most religious. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would say the most in the Jewish religion is Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. <laughs> Yom Kippur. <laughs> or whatever. We do not have Yom Kippur Easter egg rolls. Or <laughs> egg rolls. Listen, I, ha Am I, I saw right? the thing. You know, we take me. it seriously. Everybody goes to shul. They wear the pants. They do the whole thing. And then it's like the next day you get happy again. You're not supposed That's to be happy. <laughs> you don't wish anybody a happy Yom Kipper. You know? <laughs> I saw the funniest thing, though, with Santa Claus saying, you know, you have to you tell kids you have to be good for Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. But what about this, you know, the Easter Bunny? You don't have to do anything. He's just trying to offload these fucking eggs. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bunny, the bunny was part of a pagan <laughs> tradition, and they all of these things were Christian recruiting. Well, we'll let yep. you keep the rabbit if you join the join the cult, and that's where it came from. When did I see? When where did I see a a visual of a rabbit on a crucifix? Oh Jesus! You know, instead, of, instead of Christ, my wallet Bad magazine. <laughs> when i had him on the spit while i was roasting him for easter anybody here is anybody here catholic not anymore uh, i grew not up anymore. Catholic, is. Because when i was a kid well, not anymore really. when i was a kid i, I, I lived in uh, in san francisco which was an all italian neighborhood and they were catholics yeah and my every kid in the neighborhood every catholic kid in the neighborhood had a thing called a catechism which was, I guess, a book of study or something for kids or whatever. But I looked inside one of them once, and the visuals were so ghastly. This guy hanging on a cross with his tongue sticking out. Eh, you know, <laughs> I'm going, no, I don't want to be part of that. You know, what was that? That was my phone. I'm sorry. I, I thought uh, the hotel I... in France was 
See if you don't get a gold card. <laughs> <It's inspiration laughs> turn it off. Yeah, what hotel are you staying at? Uh, it's a place called the Armand, which is very nice. It's a uh, little, but it's it's great. It's in a perfect section of town. Yeah, I yeah. just love it. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I. By the way, oh, we're flying back next Monday. Uh, and and, and want us to pick a, you up at the airport? That'd be great. <laughs> well, we wanted we actually wanted to fly through New York. I'm very very sad that we didn't end up making it happen. But um, but no, uh, getting the flights on Monday was a little bit crazy because there's a lot of people who want to be in the air for the eclipse. Like that's a right. thing. There's the a air lot for of, the eclipse. There's, there's a lot of people who want to be in the air for Suppose it. Yeah, the plane isn't pointing in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> That's above my pay grade. And I'm suppose, not sure how that works. Suppose, I just know that that's what people well, just are. Just suppose the plane is here, okay, and all the windows you have to look out at to see the the eclipse is on this side over here. Mm. Are all the people from this side of the plane going to rush over to the other side of the plane? And then what happens to the balance of the plane? <laughs> These are all great questions. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, they're important questions because they do balance the load on planes. True. They do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I, I but uh, I, uh, we're, are we going to go out and look for it, Marjorie? I got the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we're going to have to go outside because I don't think we can see the sun. Can no, we're we'll up to the roof. What percentage is New York City going to have? We don't know. Uh, 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 90%. 90. Okay. 90. Yeah. Which is fine, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, that's fine. You know, totality is incredible. I mean, that's just amazing. Well, uh, yeah. during, the, during the 90%, look at the leaves of the trees, look on the ground, and you'll see little crescents. Instead of the sun, you'll just see little crescents. It's amazing. Really, I I haven't uh, uh, you know experienced. Yeah, you can get those that. at the bakery, but they say. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna friend. eat a bunch of those in the morning. Do there not you take your pet, do not take your pets out during the eclipse. Why? It, it, it will really freak them yeah, out. Freak them out, yeah. You know. Freak who out? What? Freak who out? Freak who out? Pets. Cats. Huh? Pets. Not putts, pets. I didn't get that, but <laughs> I never understand what she's saying anyways. <laughs> That's true. Today she told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> that happens about once a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when I when I bring it up later on in the day and say, you know, you told me to go fuck she, I did? She like goes into this, uh, you know, <laughs> forgets things like that. So, anyway, but I'm glad I married her. What the hell? That wasn't a mistake. Good. We're celebrating our second anniversary dinner next week. Our what? Second, second oh, anniversary oh, dinner. I didn't tell you this last week because it didn't <laughs> happen yet. Oh. It's our wedding anniversary, our 12th wedding anniversary. So, of yeah. course, we have to go out for dinner, right? Um, so uh, she makes a reservation at this restaurant that we kind of like. That's very nice, you know, kind of a bistro type restaurant. And then she suddenly realizes as we pull up to the restaurant that she made the reservation at the wrong restaurant. And this was one oh. we went to that we didn't like that much. It was okay. It wasn't a special occasion place. Their tiramisu oh. was okay. That was it. <laughs> so Marjorie anyway, now... we're celebrating next week. Marjorie's taking us out to have our... To the right place. To the right place. Are you going to let her supersize it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Anyway, so I guess we talked about everything we need to talk about this week. Anything with you down there, Mandy, in, uh, in uh, Georgia? Is there anything going on in Georgia we should know about? 
No, not anything particular. Yeah, well, you know, we're we're going to wind up putting Trump on trial faster than you guys are. Apparently. I guess so. Because I think that thing's going on starting April 15th. So, yeah, you know, we got that going. But Georgia's kind of, you've got that. Uh, Funny, yeah. Well, you, you've got that, you know, that uh, uh, attorney general or something who has. Uh, Funny. Uh, huh? Funny Willis. Funny Willis. Willis. Yeah, yeah. Well, she, I was going to say she had this surge of hormones <laughs> and uh, got into trouble for it. So. Yeah. I felt that was ridiculous. What does that have to do with Trump? But what a screw up that was, though. Yeah, but it was. I mean, it was stupid of her. But what does it have to do with Trump? It doesn't. Not a thing. Just everybody. It do not. Everybody do not. to get really bothered when somebody else gets laid in this country. Do you ever notice that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hey, listen, let's say goodbye to everybody. Like, for instance, Charlie. Bye. <laughs> and, of course, uh, from France, a little international goodwill going on here. Uh, Peace and love, kids. Yeah. By yourself. Uh, your Wi-Fi seems to be working very well at the hotel. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and, and we thank you for being with us, Mike Chisholm. Andrew Deutsch, always a pleasure to see you. Any graphics you want to impart to us before you leave you haven't earned them oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Lance, lafrisco wonderful having you here paula glad you're looking you look spectacular you don't look like somebody who was in a hospital for a couple of thank days. you darling yeah yeah get better get better come see us or we'll come see you what the hell better yet you know uh marjorie uh, thank you so much for joining us. What's for dinner? Oh, yeah, you bought shrimp today. <laughs> if it doesn't have to be made, she buys it. Okay. <laughs> Andy O'Brien, always wonderful having you here. Just brightens up the whole picture. Oh, and yeah. Of course. Sorry, I'm, I'm ignoring y'all half the time. I'm so busy. <laughs> you really are so busy. Wait till the 15th comes and goes, and then you'll be... That doesn't really have anything to do with it, but yeah, it's because I'm down a staff member. So, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, well, get them to hire somebody. And oh, yeah, so it's always a pleasure to see you. And of course, we sign off as we well, you didn't say to goodbye to Charlene. I, I thought I said goodbye to Charlene. I just, no. did. oh, goodbye, Charlene. <laughs> I thought I had I, I was no. talking to her, so I thought I was saying goodbye to her. Get off my back, will you? <laughs> off my lawn. And finally, <laughs> call the whole thing off here by signing off with the immortal words of Edward Berger, who says, That's all, folks. Bravo. Bye. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. Thanks, Bye. Bye.